The first chapter of Genesis, the story of creation. For millennia, people of Western culture have believed the words printed there to be the truth. The opening verses described in rich and glorious detail how God formed the earth below and the heavens above, including the sky and stars, the planets and the animals, and even humans themselves. No one doubted or questioned this opening chapter to the foundational book of Western society until the tale began to conflict with growing scientific inquiry and knowledge. Over time, the biblical story, bit by bit, was chiseled away by the relentless advancement of modern science, driven by man's insatiable curiosity about the world around him. Today, however, even after centuries of scientific advancement, there are those who still cling to the old story of Genesis chapter 1. Those who believe it's every word and defend it with every breath. There are those who take the story literally, believing the creation of the universe, the earth and all life upon it to have taken a mere six days. There are others, however, who have read the story and have tried to parallel it with the discoveries of modern science. Are either correct? Or are each just unwilling to admit the obvious? Are both merely unwilling to face what Genesis got wrong? Biblical creation or modern science? Some see them in conflict, while others see them in harmony. Those seeing conflict between the biblical story and modern science, siding with Genesis, read the opening chapter literally. When God said, let there be light, there really was light. When God formed animals on the land, God formed animals on the land, beasts fully matured. Still others, however, try to reconcile the first chapter in the book of Genesis with the discoveries of modern science. When Genesis says, God formed a firmament to be the sky, separating the waters below from the waters above, these advocates believe this verse is referring to the formation of the spiral Milky Way galaxy, for example. Or when Genesis describes the creation of animals in the sea, it is actually referring to the Cambrian explosion an event covering 70 million years or so in which the fossil record documents an accelerated rate of evolution in which most of the major groups of complex animals came into existence. Biblical creationists of the first kind, those believing in a literal reading of Genesis 1, are often the most vocal and thus the easiest to find. Examples are the outspoken Kent Hovind. My name is Kent Hovind. I taught high school science for 15 years and now for 16 years I've been an evangelist doing seminars on creation, evolution, and dinosaurs. And I tell people right up front that I believe the Bible is the infallible, inspired, inerrant word of the living God. I believe it from cover to cover. I even believe the cover on mine. It says Kent Hovind. Creator of the Creationist Museum, Ken Ham. I believe what the Bible says. Do you know the Bible is a very special book? It's a unique book. It's different than any other book in the whole world because the Bible claims to be the Word of God who knows everything, who's always been there, who's told us the whole history of the universe. Or author of numerous creationist books, including the iconic The Genesis Flood and Scientific Creationism, as well as one of the founders of the Creation Research Society and the Institute of Creation Research, the late Henry M. Morris. The topic this morning, then, is the Genesis record, the book of Genesis. And I use the word record advisedly, and I think correctly. It's not simply a book of theology or a book of spiritual instruction, although it is that, but it's an actual record of the real events of real people, real places, at the beginning of human history. And therefore, it's the most important book in the world. Genesis and the entire Bible for people such as these was written under the direct inspiration of God. Every word, every syllable, every nuance, every assertion did not make it into the biblical text without God's direct intention. Such inspiration does not lend itself to error. If belief in the inerrant inspiration of the Bible in general and the book of Genesis in particular guides a person, then what Genesis reports must by definition be 100% scientifically and historically true. If there is any disagreement between what the Bible reports 
and what modern science has discovered, the error is in modern science, not the Bible. However, others eager to keep the biblical book of Genesis relevant in a modern scientific world have taken another approach. They maintain that if there is any disagreement between what the Bible reports and what modern science has discovered, the error is not to be found in either science or the Bible, but in the interpretation of the Bible. Two examples of these thinkers are Andrew Parker, author of The Genesis Enigma, Why the Bible is Scientifically Accurate, and Gerald L. Schroeder, author of The Science of God, The Convergence of Scientific and Biblical Wisdom. These believers think it is possible to interpret, very loosely, the verses of Genesis 1 and find parallels in the discoveries of modern science. In this multi-part video essay, we will have opportunity to look at the first chapter of Genesis and compare what we read there with both approaches to the biblical book. When read literally, how much conflict really arises between the biblical story of creation and modern science? And if interpreted loosely, without the fetters of literalism, can the biblical tale be found to be a stunningly accurate reflection of what modern scientific discoveries in the varied fields of cosmology, geology, paleontology, and biology have revealed. We should begin, of course, in the beginning, with the opening verse of Genesis chapter 1. That will be the introduction to part 2 of this video series.